well for those of us who uh, in the future will be traveling through space. An astronomer just laid out a navigation system for interstellar space travel. It's now 2021. We finally don't have to worry quite so much about our spacecraft getting lost in interstellar space. Using the positions and shifting light of stars, both near and far, astronomer Corinne Baylor-Jones demonstrated the feasibility of autonomous on-the-fly navigation for spacecraft traveling far beyond the solar system. This looks like Star Trek, doesn't it? Now, interstellar space navigation may not seem like an immediate problem, but already in the last decade, human-made instruments have entered interstellar space as first Voyager 1 in 2012 and Voyager 2 2018 crossed the solar system boundary known as the heliopause. So it's only a matter of time before New Horizons joins them, followed by more probes in the future. And as the spacecraft travel farther and farther from home planet and our solar system, communications with our Earth, of course, will be taking longer to get back to us. New Horizons is currently nearing, nearing 14 light hours from Earth, which means it takes 28 hours to send a signal and receive a response. That's over a day, obviously. Not an impossible tracking and navigation system, but an ungainly one. A greater, at greater and greater distances, though, this will no longer be reliable. Please support my Patreon channel, since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. My Patreon channel will have five different videos from my YouTube channel every day. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Baylor Jones wrote in his paper, When traveling to the nearest stars, signals will be far too weak and light travel times will be of orders yet or years which is currently available on the preprint server ARXIV, where it awaits pre-peer review from astronomy community. Well, why don't they do this? Why don't they have relay stations through space and reboot, you know, resend the, um, like antennas in space so that uh, the message gets uh, to wherever it's going quicker? I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but whatever. Now, an interstellar spacecraft, he said, will therefore have to navigate autonomously using uh, this information to decide when to make course corrections or to switch on instruments and such a spacecraft needs to be able to determine its position and velocity using only onboard measurements. I mean, obviously that means uh, artificial intelligence. Baylor Jones works at the Max Planck, Planck Institute for Astronomy in Germany and is not the first to, he's not the first to think of this NASA has been working on navigation by pulsars using the dead star's regular pulsations as the basis for a galactic GPS system. This method sounds pretty great, but it may be subject to mistakes at greater distances because of distortion of the signal by the interstellar medium. Now, with the catalog of stars, Baylor Jones was able to show that it's possible to work out a spacecraft's coordinates in six dimensions, three in space and three in velocity, to a high accuracy. And he bases this on the way the position of those stars changes from the spacecraft's point of view. He says, as the spacecraft moves away from the sun, the observed positions and velocities of the stars will change relative to those in an Earth-based catalog due to parallax, aberration, and the Doppler effect. He says, by measuring just the angular distances between pairs of stars and comparing these to the catalog, we can infer the coordinates of the spacecraft via an, uh, 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 an iterative forward modeling process. The parallax and aberration both refer to the apparent change in the positions of stars due to Earth's motion, and the Doppler effect is a change in the wavelength of light from a star based on whether it appears to be moving closer to or away from the observer. So there's a lot of things that have to be taken into account. Now, because of all these effects involved in relative positions to, of the two bodies, a third body, the spacecraft that is, in a different position, will see a different arrangement of the stars. It's actually pretty difficult to determine the distance to stars, 
but we're getting a lot better. He said the Gaia station is conducting an ongoing mission to map the Milky Way in three dimensions and has given us the most accurate map of the galaxy to date. Baylor Jones tested his system using a simulated star catalog and then on nearby stars from the Hipparchos, Hipparchos catalog, which was compiled in 1997 at relativistic spacecraft speeds. Although this is not as accurate as Gaia, that's not terribly important. He says the aim was to test that the navigation system can work. So with just 20 stars, the system can determine the position and velocity of a spacecraft within three astronomical units and two kilometers per second. That's 1.24 miles per second. And this accuracy can be improved inverse to the square root of the number of stars. So you can imagine the computer and the AI have a lot of calculations to do. With 100 stars, the accuracy came down to 1.3 astronomical units and 0.7 kilometers per second. There are some kinks that would need to be worked out. No kidding. <laughs> Otherwise, you just shoot off into space. The system has not taken stellar binaries into consideration. Okay. Nor has it considered the instrumentation. The aim was to show that it could be done as a first step towards actualizing it. It's even possible that it could be used in tandem with pulsar navigation so that the two systems might be able to minimize each other's flaws. And then the sky literally is the limit, he says. The paper is available on ARXIV. This is on Science Alert by Michael Michelle Starr. So there you go. We're ready to uh, discover space. Aka Star Trek. Okay.